All right, so over the next few videos, we're going to talk about the systems development life cycle. Um, as a reminder, this is what the systems development life cycle actually looks like. It might be really useful for you to have either this diagram or maybe a drawing of the diagram or something like that on hand as we actually go through um, the following videos. But what we'll do is take a closer look at each one of these different phases and, you know, kind of zoom in and see what aspects of these phases are actually involved in creating the um, information system. So that's the idea for the following videos. The first one of these phases is the system definition phase. Um, as soon as there is a recognized need for an information system, we have to define what that system should be. Or um, once we need to make a change to an existing existing system, uh, we need to know what that system should look like once we are finished with the change. So the system definition is going to involve actually defining the goals and the scope. So what is the system going to accomplish once it is working and what magnitude of a problem is it kind of looking at? Are we building a system that takes in all customer and operational and you know, manufacturing and all that kind of stuff, every single piece of data and does stuff with it? Or do we have a smaller scope system that maybe just helps our marketing department identify potential customers based on their, um, browsing habits within our websites and also add data that we were able to buy off of some company. So that's the idea of defining the goals and the scope. Uh, we'll also be assessing the feasibility of building up the uh, system. Uh, we'll form a project team and we will actually plan the project. For the feasibility aspect of this, um, we are going to look at answering the question, does this project make sense? Um, there's a lot of different ways in which uh, we can actually look at answering this question. Um, ways that we need to address, you know, does it make sense in this dimension of our company for us to actually create this project. Let's look at some of the different types here. Um, for the cost, do we have the budget or can we even make a budget that supports this system? Um, you know, we might say, hey, here's the most amount of money that we are willing to spend on creating a new system. Uh, you know, at this point also, we would have the scope of the system and actually the purpose of the system pretty well understood. We know we need a system that does something, that does blank. Um, at that point, uh, we might be given a budget that is the maximum amount of money that the company is willing to spend on building up this type of system, given the purpose that we want it to accomplish. We'll already know the benefit that it will have if we are able to accomplish this. So this budget will be made uh, with respect to that, with respect to how important this system might be for the company. So we need to try to assess before we even get into anything else, can we even possibly make an information system that we're thinking about within the budget that we are given? When we have this cost feasibility right here, we are essentially asking if the cost it takes to create this system is going to um, make is going to be less than the amount of value we actually get from the system. Will this system add so much value to the company that it is justifiable for us to spend money actually creating the thing? And in order to know that we have to be able to figure out, well, how much do we think the system itself is going to cost and how much do we think we're going to get out of this? Um, all this will probably happen at a pretty high level uh, between people who know sort of the specifics and uh, 
information that you need in order to actually develop that kind of system and business management who are able to assess like well if we had some thing that could do this kind of job then we could expect to see this amount of profit from uh having that system we could expect this amount of value to be added to our company so that's going to be a major thing is figuring out if it's going to be worth it to create this system can this system be created within some sort of budget that would allow the company to make money off of it there's the schedule feasibility can it be created in time because a project does need to be finished at some point uh, in order for it to start making money and sooner is better although there should be an understanding that you know it takes time to make a project like this but the project shouldn't also drag on for so long that it stops being worth continuing to fund uh, better technology might come out that makes the project redundant or uh, requires a need for the project itself to be updated and that can cause uh, just a, a spiral of costs uh, that are all wrapped up in this uh, project so it should be able to be completed in time that's going to be another aspect of feasibility here now of course uh, existing technology has to be able to meet the needs of the uh, information system and this is a this is a concern that needs to be addressed no matter what even if it's full custom hardware and software for whatever information system. Uh, there will still be a technology involved in, say, hosting servers or actually building um, this custom hardware or supporting the software that needs to be run or all that kind of stuff. And, you know, whatever technical requirements there are, if there's not really existing technology that can support the system or if it can't do it within a reasonable cost kind of which also kind of gets into the uh, cost feasibility question but if technology right now isn't up to the task then the project may not be worth doing and of course it has to fit in the organization uh it needs to work with the uh, current customs and culture and charter of the organization so you know just bringing in any new software or project or something like that might not be helpful because um, you know the people who actually are supposed to use the project might not want to use it for whatever reason uh, also uh, legal requirements are really important as well if a certain organization is bound to legal requirements for say the privacy of their data or all that kind of stuff um, your new information system actually has to fall in line with that as well so it's very important and then of course you need to actually have people who are working on the information system so it is important to build a team uh, at this stage all the team is really going to be doing is planning out the project and you're going to have a lot of people from a lot of different areas of expertise now a team could be in-house uh, you could also use outside contractors for some of if not all of the um, actual project planning stage depending on what your project is using. If you anticipate using, um, let's say, uh, some systems from that are built by external companies, you're planning on integrating them into your information system, you might have outside contractors who are specialists in those systems working with you to help with that integration, for example. And of course, the team may change over time, uh, depending on what is currently needed as you're going through the different phases. Um, your team needs for the actual system design part might be far different than the team needs for the implementation part of the project. So all of it could be very, uh, you know, it could evolve over time. So of course, with a team, you're going to need a manager, someone who can lead, who can sort of keep things going, uh, 
make sure that everyone is staying on task and heading in the right direction. You can have business analysts, which will help implement systems to accomplish the um, actual company's organizational strategies. Uh, they're really going to be useful in making sure that the system is working towards the strategy. So kind of a, a, a bit of a um, middle ground between the uh, actual people who are building the system together and the manager who is making sure that the whole thing is staying on track. And then you have system systems analysts. Uh, these are IT professionals with business and tech knowledge. Um, they're going to uh, work more with the actual information tech side of the um, the system that is being developed. So work with the hardware and the software, but the business knowledge allows them to actually um, make sure that that hardware and software is doing what it needs to in order to work towards the strategy that the hardware and software is actually meeting the goals. Whereas other IT professionals with less business knowledge might be more focused on making sure that it works. So they're also able to find a good mix between um, that sort of technical knowledge and business knowledge there. Uh, business analysts will be more on the business side and systems analysts will be more on the IT side. Then you might have other IT specialists depending on what the project actually is. So you might have people who are more into coding. Um, you might have hardware and communications specialists if you're doing some hardware uh, based pieces of your solutions like embedded technology on microcomputers or something like that. You might have people who are working on designing the databases, um, who have an understanding of what, you know, database technology is actually needed for the data that's being used, and so on and so forth. Uh, and then, of course, the users. Uh, users, future users of and information system are really important to include throughout this design process because they're the ones who really can say, you know, for the job that I'm supposed to do, here is what I need the system to do. Uh, and we'll see a lot more work with users uh, going on in future phases, but it is really important to keep the users in mind when actually designing the system because if the people who are supposed to use the system can't actually get use out of the system, whether it's they don't know how to use a thing because it's very complicated and, and the procedures are poorly defined, or the system just doesn't do the job that it, they are supposed to make it do, um, that would be very bad. So they should be able to work with these systems, or with the system design process in order to make systems they can work with. All right, that is the system definition phase, the next video will be requirements analysis.